gentlemen, good evening. On behalf of the Foundation for Saline Area School, I would like to welcome you to the fourth annual Foundation for Saline Area School Hall of Fame induction ceremony. My name is Kurt Ellis, and I'm fortunate to be your MC tonight, and I'm also a proud Saline High School alumnus. One of the most enjoyable parts of this weekend is the opportunity to connect with lifelong friends. I think the first year I did this, I said old friends, and I was corrected that old is a relative term, and having just turned 50, it means something different to me today than it did before as well. But we certainly are getting the opportunity to connect with lifelong friends and former co-workers. Tonight, we're also very fortunate to have a number of previous Hall of Fame inductees with us here tonight. If you would, would the members of the class of 2014, our first class, please stand. And our class of 2015, please stand. Thank you, Coach Jeffrey. Last year's class of 2016, please stand. Liz, Liz Moore made the trek all the way up from Hurricane Ravage, Florida. We're having to have her here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give all these previous Hall of Famers a nice round of applause. The evening, and in fact, much of the weekend has been made possible in part because of two key partnerships that the Foundation has, most notably Hall of Fame weekend sponsor, RV Plastics. A fixture in the community of Saline and a supporter of Saline Area Schools since 1980, we are very, very fortunate and grateful to RV Plastics for sponsoring this special weekend. We would like to thank Vice President and General Manager Fred Piercy for his generous support. I know I saw Fred here tonight. Fred, would you please stand? I said Vice President, I didn't mean that. President. That's all right. Bill said, did you get demoted? I said, maybe. At this point, we're going to begin dinner, and they are going to uh, go ahead and uh, call tables up one by one. Um, we're very fortunate tonight that Angel Food Catering is um, providing the food that we are about to receive, and uh, they're going to dismiss you table by table, starting with the, the tables for our inductees. Our uh, formal part of the program with the awards ceremony will start right at 6.45, so you can kind of pace yourself through dinner, but please enjoy this meal. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and get started with the awards portion of the program, but before we do, please join me in giving Mike Maynard and the staff to be able to cater a warm round of applause for the video. Mike is also a Slain alum, and we're happy to have him back here providing the for us tonight. Prior to dinner, I mentioned the two key partnerships we have that make this event possible, RV Plastics. Uh, it's also important that we mention Wall of Fame sponsor, the initial Wall of Fame sponsor, Old National Bank. Uh, Scott Fosnick, Vice President, Community Banking Officer for Saline, could not be here tonight, but uh, Old National has certainly been a key partner for us in this process from day one, and we'd like to thank them for sponsoring the Wall of Fame. And up to the Hall of Fame. About four and a half years ago, the Foundation's Alumni Committee talked about ways to honor individuals who had demonstrated outstanding character, individual ability, leadership, character, personal drive, and dedication. In short, we sought individuals whose lives and accomplishments served to inspire and impact the students here in Saline and in our community. To be eligible, candidates have to have at least one of the following requirements. A Saline High School graduate at least five years earlier, a formal faculty, former faculty, staff member, coach, or administrator, or an individual who's made exceptional contribution the Saline Area Schools community. When reviewing nominees, we look for individuals who have gained recognition and prominence in their field and or endeavor, or made noteworthy contributions in those fields or endeavors, a person of integrity and good character, and finally, people who exemplify the principles, philosophy, and mission of the Saline Area School District and the Foundation of Saline Area Schools Alumni Committee. Those who are not familiar with our committee, might think finding individuals with those type of credentials would be difficult, but we've found 29 of them in the last four years. In that group of 29, we've had three individuals who have been recognized by their coaches associations as Hall of Fame members, 12 individuals who served Saline Area Schools for 30 years or more as teachers, the owner of a business that was a fixture in the community for years, the owner of an organization or president of an organization that's provided fresh drinking water to individuals who would not otherwise have it, 
not one but two world-renowned fiddlers and a Broadway actress and performer and choreographer who has appeared twice on the Academy Awards as well as the Primetime Emmys. Needless to say, Slane is an extraordinary place where people do extraordinary things. Tonight it's our pleasure to introduce to you the fourth class of the Hall of Fame. I am confident you will find them to be equally deserving of the recognition they are about to receive. The first individual we're going to honor tonight is Christella Scanlon. And unfortunately, between the time we announced the Hall of Fame and tonight, Christella moved down to Kentucky and she was unable to be with us tonight. But for those of you that have had children in the district for the last eight to ten years, you might recognize Christella as the individual who has put together the um, the 14 district court um, criminal justice program with us. Kids go over there, do mock trials, and have an opportunity to see what the courthouse looks like, to see what that operation looks like, to learn a little bit more about that side of the law. And Christella was really integral in creating and working with our staff to make that program go. It was a wonderful, wonderful thing for our students, and we're eternally grateful for her for setting that up. Her plaque will be displayed down in the Hall of Fame with the others. The first person here live tonight, however, is Hal Morningstone. And Hal, uh, his name is somewhat synonymous, I think, with folks who, who think of young, early childhood, special education, and literacy. Um, Hal retired from Saline Area Schools back in 2005, but those of you that are around the district a lot, you continue to see Hal. He worked as a substitute teacher between traveling back and forth to Florida for the wintertime, and he just, to this day still volunteers over at Pleasant Ridge Elementary. Uh, which ironically is the site of the old Jensen School where he started and died in the fourth grade, by the way. So, um, at any rate, I'd like to introduce to you tonight Hal Morningstar. Thank you. What I have to say to you tonight does not come from here, but it comes from here. <laughs> I apologize for that, but I saw that on television once and I thought, it's not likely I'm ever going to get a chance to do that. And you, know, you can see why I was surprised. Uh, obviously, and of course, I want to thank the Celine Foundation, uh, all of you who uh, are uh, already inducted. Came tonight. Um, apparently, that's if not an expectation, uh, a desire of, of the organization. Um, but also, friends and family, and um, a number of people that I met that I didn't know before, um, and some that I may have not seen for a number of years. Um, in looking back over my years here in Saline, I, I thought. First and foremost, about uh, many, many students, uh, former students of mine, some who made me smile, some who made me laugh, some, <coughs> excuse me, who made me cry, probably. Um, that's a lot easier now at, at, at uh, my current age. Um, and some who probably added to my um, higher blood pressure that happened over the years. Uh, at the same time, I, I also think of other people in the district, obviously my colleagues and, and the, uh, the teaching staff, and uh, specifically uh, the special education staff and, and the teachers and uh, support people for that program. I, I was just thinking the other day, and this is not, some, not a novel thought, but what makes, for me, and what made Saline Area Schools great uh, was not, well, we didn't have a building like this. Uh, we had a high school without a swimming pool uh, when I started. But uh, it's not the facilities or the world-class technology, it's the people. And uh, I think that's who I think of uh, most often and, and uh, most about. I also remember something that was unique because I didn't always teach in Saline, but was not just collaboration and teaming, but it was 
uh, the extent to which that was encouraged and fostered in uh, Saline area schools. And it wasn't just uh, between teachers, which obviously was a very valuable part of that, but it was between those of us who were teachers and, and other staff members. So uh, if you don't mind, I, I'm not, obviously I'm not going to mention names, but I can think now of uh, some examples of people uh, who made great contributions to the uh, schools, to the district, and certainly to me personally. I think of uh, some of the bus drivers who were willing to work with me on uh, implementing a behavior plan. Uh, in general, I was assigned students with emotional impairment because that was supposedly my uh, area of expertise. Um, but uh, the results were, um, in many cases, um, they were no longer being kicked off the bus and they were showing up every day at school. Uh, uh, others I'm, I'm thinking about, even way back to Jensen School, and certainly at Houghton, uh, were some of the custodians who were willing to work with me and on occasion uh, allow one of my uh, students to to help them, uh, whether it was uh, uh, cleaning up in the cafeteria or sweeping in the hall, you would think it was they had one of the sweepstakes. And, uh, and especially at a time when there wasn't as much focus on hands-on learning, especially at the elementary level, it was a chance for some of my students to have success excuse me, without paper and pencil tasks being required. Um, in later years at, at Houghton and, and certainly at Heritage, when uh, inclusion and then full inclusion came for uh, students with exceptional needs, we added uh, what we call them first teaching assistants or teacher assistants. Now I believe the term is paraeducator or paraprofessional. And uh, my experience there was these are and were people who did so much work behind the scenes, sometimes with our most difficult students, uh, and, uh, and, and possibly were taken for granted in the sense that they, they were there, they did their job, they took care of things uh, uh, the entire day. I, I just want to say, I hope I never, and I don't believe I did, take them for granted. I, I appreciated uh, what they did. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, working with and learning from the staff uh, here in Saline allowed me, uh, someone who felt like he was the luckiest guy in the world when I landed a job at Jensen School back in 1979, uh, it allowed me to become a better teacher, to learn. Uh, I ended up learning uh, probably uh, as much from my students as I, as I did back at uh, good old Eastern Michigan. And, uh, but uh, in addition to that, it, it allowed me to become part of the Saline Area Schools family, of which I consider myself a, a humble member today. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Those pair educators you refer to continue to play a key role for us, and we have a difficult time finding them. So, if anybody would like to become a pair educator, we are always hiring. The uh, next individual I'd like to introduce to you tonight is Dr. Catherine Ramsland. Uh, main name is Johnson. Catherine is a 1971 graduate of Saline High School who is currently a professor of forensic psychology and criminal justice at DeSales University. In addition, she also um, directs the Master of Arts program in criminal justice there and is a prolific author having published over 60 books and 1,000 articles. Um, in talking to her in preparation for this event, she has uh, collaborated and provided uh, guidance 
in the areas of forensic science and forensic psychology to TV shows such as The Today Show, 2020, 48 Hours, NPR, Coast to Coast, Montel Williams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we are very, very happy to have Catherine Ramsland back here tonight. shorter than everybody else, I think. Uh, I'm a professor, but I am more a writer, so I also wrote my speech because I think you'll like it better than if I just speak. <laughs> so, I was looking through my yearbooks to try to think of something, and I found our senior wills from the class of 1971. <laughs> and in our senior wills, most of the students left something to friends or to rising seniors from the junior class. I picked my government teacher, Mrs. McNally, because she was frustrated with me that I had told her I was never going to college, never, 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 never going to college, and she said I was wasting my potential, so I willed to her my wasted potential. <laughs> It turns out that my sarcasm was irony because I didn't waste it, I used it for all it was worth. Thanks largely to teachers like her, Jake, <laughs> so I could call him Jake, it's Taylor Jacobson, you know it was Jake, and others who hope to plant seeds in their students that would grow the love of learning. They must have taken root because despite my intentions, when I hitchhiked into Flagstaff, Arizona one year, and I didn't go to college for three years, however, I did take a class, and it was a philosophy class, and I fell in love. Not with the professor, though he was very cute. <laughs> I fell in love with learning, meaning it all began here, and I just didn't realize it because I was very ready when I got to that class. Now I have four graduate degrees. I will get another in a heartbeat because I really do love learning. And most of the books I've written, I've written to learn something, not written something I already know, to learn, because that's what I love. So the first person I have to thank is the truest mentor of my life, my mother, who is here tonight. She gave me books. She got me reading before I ever entered a school room. She exposed me to things that were way over my head, like opera, <laughs> and made me want to reach for them, made me want to go for the magic. It was my mother who first triggered the dopamine rush in my brain for what lay at the end of a book or a movie and addicted me to curiosity. So as a professor, I struggle now with what I'm sure my mentors at Sylvania High School struggle with, and that is to plant that curiosity in kids, to make them want to know more and be more. I struggle with how to instill that addiction to the desire to have your life enlarged to have your feelings enhanced, and to develop compassion for people who are not like us. Even, I'm afraid to say, serial killers. Yes, I was going to get that in there, <laughs> because that is my expertise. That is the road that I took. I am an expert in serial killers, known around the world for this. So my learning path has taken me into this dark world to understand what turns someone into a person with a desire to harm. I spent five years talking with Dennis Rader, the BTK killer from Wichita, and like people like Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, Eileen Mornos, John Wayne Gacy, he's a complex person. I learned a lot. That book was published on my mother's birthday, so there's, <laughs> there was an irony, and so she got the first copy, and to her credit, read it. <laughs> I think we need to understand these people, and I think my education has paid off in that particular way. It's an unusual path, but my path always was unusual. So that brings me back to my point, mentors, 
guide us toward richer lives. It expose us to things that will affect us and that will change us. People who become teachers to be mentors know the joy of watching the seeds take root and grow. So, Mrs. McNally, thank you. It wasn't wasted after all. It just took a little longer to grow. Thank you. Mr. Gray, we might have found a opening day speaker for our staff next year. That's fantastic. <laughs> I'm also happy to know that there are a number of us sitting over here and over here who also frustrated Mrs. McNally in government class. <laughs> she was a, a wonderful teacher. Um, no question about that. Thank you, Kathy. The next individual we're going to introduce you tonight is somebody who should be relatively well known to most people in the room and certainly most who have come to Saline High School. If you were coming down that entry, you would have walked past the Ellen A. Ewing Performing Arts Center. And that center was named after Helen after she retired as superintendent of Saline Area Schools. She came to Saline and served in a variety of roles, um, ultimately becoming the assistant superintendent for curriculum and personnel. And in that role, ironically enough, began as a liaison with the newly formed Foundation for Saline Area Schools. So her roots with this organization go back quite some ways. Um, in terms of impact in the community, um, Certainly, there are the relationships and things along those lines that, that many of our folks have talked about tonight and often come up here. Um, but certainly, Ellen also has a lasting legacy in terms of the bricks and mortar at not only this building, but Heritage Woodland Meadows and Harvest as well, uh, being superintendent when all those buildings were built. So, I would like to introduce to you tonight former superintendent of Slinary Schools, Ellen Ewing. Another short person, <laughs> and I too have my written down. First, I'd like to thank my family for being here, my husband, our son, our daughter-in-law, Steve Ewing, Carolyn Ewing, my older brother, Ed Mattine, and his wife, Jenny, and my baby brother, Mark, and his wife, Sherry. 30 years ago, Celine Community Leaders with a Vision for the Future assembled to create the foundation for Celine Area Schools. They focused on sustaining and improving what was already in place in this district. As noted by the Foundation's upcoming celebration of 30 years in existence, this community has continued to enthusiastically support education. And each time I have attended the celebrations of the research-based grants prepared and implemented by staff, I walk away in awe. Student-led presentations demonstrate the enthusiasm for learning and the skills that they have acquired that will assist them in the future. Well, with all of these staff, student, and community success stories in mind, it is quite humbling to be added to the Hall of Fame. Thank you. I consider it quite an honor to be inducted this evening. I love Celine. Now, back to our inductees. 
The next individual that we're going to honor tonight is Mary Gordon Converse. Unfortunately, Mary could not be with us tonight, so Shelly Venom is going to speak on her behalf. But Mary Gordon Converse is an individual who taught at the Mayor Schools for 47 years. I'd like to say it again, 47 years. And she was as good the day she left as she was on the day she started. And uh, so we'd like to have Shelly go up and talk on behalf of Mary. wanted me to deliver some words to you. I am speaking on her behalf and felt so honored that she had chosen me to do so. All of you know Mary probably because she has been a part of Celine Mary Schools for so long. So to have been asked to speak on her behalf was quite an honor. So Mary is receiving this work today for so many reasons, but we kind of narrowed, narrowed it down into four categories. First of all, Mary was a student of Celine Area Schools. She attended a one-room schoolhouse for the first five years of her education, and she was part of the first consolidated school district of Celine Area Schools. So I thought that was pretty remarkable about her. Another thing about Mary is that she graduated from high school at Celine High School in 1962, and then she attended Eastern Michigan University, where she graduated with her BA in 1966. When she graduated, or when she attended EMU, she was a member of the teacher's sorority, and also, because she so valued education, she went to the University of Michigan, where she received her MA, and graduated with that degree in 1981. Mary was a member of this staff at Celine High School. She said it was her dream job. She was hired in 1966, and she was hired to teach public speaking as well as literature classes. Another thing that makes Mary a remarkable woman, besides, besides her high value for education, is the way that she inspired others. I added that, it had to be said. So many of you in this room are products of Mary's teaching. I know David Raff said earlier this evening that everything he learned about public speaking came from Mary. And, um, and so, of course, she would have been really happy to hear him say such nice things about her. Mary is remarkable because in the sixth grade, she went to the big city of Celine, and that's when she started to go to school. She said that age seven, she started thinking about teaching as a career. And then at age 14, that is when she decided that that is what she was in fact going to do. So as I said, she graduated from Celine and went to Michigan and then got a job teaching at Celine High School. The highlights of Mary's career, I asked her, what would she say? And she said that in her 47 year career, she directed plays, she was a forensics and debate coach, she attended tournaments with those teams, she also attended camps with them, she served on the National Honor Society Board, she coached students in DECA, in FFA, and Poetry Aloud, Out Loud Speaking Competitions. With the master's degree in secondary education, Mary also was instrumental in developing literature, debate, public speaking courses, as well as updating courses, of course, to meet state standards. It was her joy and honor to be a part of the Celine High School staff. And again, on behalf of Mary Sue Gordon Converse, known to us as Mrs. Converse, many of us, I would like to accept her award.
Shelley, you can tell, Mary Sue, that you selected one of the few things that David has said tonight that can be repeated from the morning. <laughs> to reiterate, so. uh, the, the, uh, before we introduce the next individual, I know I, I mentioned the photographers who are here tonight, but we also have this high school video crew, so if you could please give those folks around the wall. Saturday night and here with us. So. Um, the next individual I'd like to introduce to you is Carol Perboa. And we stole Carol from Milan back in the late 1970s and 1978. And she came to Celine to start the Title I program, a uh, Title I preschool program, uh, which was originally going to be housed at Jensen School. Um, and over the years, she taught preschool, she taught vocational, uh, child care, and history at the high school, as well as first, second, and third grade until she retired in 2003. Since retiring in 2003, she's continued to give back to the teaching profession by mentoring uh, young teachers uh, through the University of Michigan, and most notably to Celine, continuing to mentor teachers at Park Ridge Elementary School in the field of special education. So I'd like to introduce you tonight, Carol Perpola. Just a split second, I thought I might have lucked out with Mary not being right in front of me as a speaker, because she's of course been our legendary speaker for, for so many years. I even remember I even remember David Rapp checking to see if he needed to spit his gum out when he gave one of his speeches when she was with us. So you know, I had some amazing speeches tonight, and I can imagine all of the people that have been nominated this sort of blow me away. Um, I guess I just sort of feel like I'm the more, I'm just a regular teacher. One of the things that's been special about my career, they didn't put the numbers in, but it was about every seven years, I got to make a major, major fun change. So my husband was always glad that my seven year itch came and I got to do it at school instead of anywhere else. <laughs> I did get to teach the high school for seven years and I've met so many of you guys that I still admire so very, very much. Then I went straight down to first grade, if you can imagine. My first year with first grade, Emily Sicklin was in my class. She's done rather well. And stayed there for seven years before I started switching around again, second grade, seven years. Third grade, I stopped a little early. And then was able to work at the University of Michigan for seven years, so there's something about the seven year thing that goes on. I would like to thank uh, this, the foundation for the kind of support that they've given our schools and our teachers for so long. The things that they're doing here tonight and for us have been amazing. It made us feel very, very, very special indeed. Um, and I can't even begin to tell you about the amazing teachers I've been able to work with through the years. I got to work under Ellen Ewing, which was, we called the Camelot years. <laughs> we love, love, love that. She supported us so very much. And I think that's one of the keys of our Celine schools is that the just amazing people have given so very, very much. I am totally honored, surprised, honored to have had you nominate me for this. And thank you very much. Somebody by name, I'll simply thank the group in uh, mass. They all know who they are and they know the work that they do. So I'd like to thank them publicly uh, in front of you. The next individual I'd like to recognize here tonight is Becca Schweitzer. And I mentioned earlier we look for people that serve to inspire students in Celine. When I think of young people in the performing arts program in Celine today, I can't help but think of how inspiring it would be for them to see her plaque on the wall knowing that she's performed with people like Jennifer Lopez, Jay-Z, Christina Aguilera, Leanne Rhimes, uh, Catherine McPhee, Orabel Bundy. She's been in films such as uh, Candelabra, La La Land, and my personal favorite, Austin Powers. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I'd like to introduce you tonight, Becca Schweitzer. I have my cheat sheet too. I'm not gonna tweet while I'm up here, but it's my phone. <laughs> um, first of all, I just want to say that I feel so fortunate to have been able to go to a school as distinguished and, and as amazing as Celine High School. Um, when I was thinking of what I wanted to say, as I'm being given this honor, I was thinking back to all of the healthy challenges that I got being a part of the school system. Um, and I, really, I believe that they really laid a foundation for me to have success in my career. Um, mediocrity doesn't really fly here. As I remember it, it didn't really fly when I was here going to school. Um, of course, you could you could be mediocre, but then you would your teachers would react accordingly and grade accordingly. And I think that's so so important. And I I just got such a huge uh, sense of accountability instilled in me from. All of the staff. I keep looking at you guys. I have some of my teachers here tonight, Liz and Mary, um, and all of my teachers. And to me, that really went a long way because obviously I kind of took a left turn. I went uh, down the path less traveled, especially coming from an area like this. And it was probably my maybe maybe well. I'll I'll go ahead and say failures are those moments where I felt like I was stumbling or something wasn't clicking or maybe I didn't do my best or maybe I did my best and it just didn't translate. It was those moments that I felt like I learned the most from and I, it just makes me that much more grateful that, that the teachers here hold the students to such a high standard because for me it, it really meant so much going into my profession, dancing and choreographing professionally in LA is a very competitive, it's a very competitive field. So I needed those moments of self-discovery. I think when you you have you have those moments when you're not sure of yourself and that's where, when you really discover how am I gonna deal with this, how am I gonna step forward, um, how am I how am I gonna confront this next time. So so that's that's really um, some of the most memorable things to me. And I also want to thank my parents who are here tonight, Barb and Ralph, um, for discovering this amazing community. Um, I, I only went to high school here. I, I started as a freshman, so so we moved here <coughs> the way through for me. And thank you for finding this incredible community to bring my whole family. And um, I'm just so honored to be to be included in this. Thank you so much. The well, last but certainly not least here tonight is Mike Smith. Mike is a longtime teacher and longtime coach with Sling Area Schools. During his teaching career, Mike taught English, which is uh, for some of us in the room remember that. I'll never forget ninth grade English sitting in his classroom. Um, U.S. history, advanced placement in U.S. history, um, and actually was the first uh, teacher to have AP courses, uh, that AP U.S. history that accepted sophomores. Um, many know Mike as an accomplished track and cross country coach, and uh, Mike coached for 39 years, was a track coach association Hall of Fame, I'm sorry, track coach association coach of the year nominee 12 times, is in the track coach association Hall of Fame. He was named National uh, Coach of the Year um, in 2015 and uh, 2016 also by the National Scholastic Athletics Foundation Hall of Fame uh, National Coach of the Year as well. The reality is, in addition to being a Hall of Fame coach and a Hall of Fame teacher, Mike's a Hall of Fame person, and we are so happy to have him here tonight, so I'd like to bring up Mike Smith. start by saying um, I didn't work with Jennifer Lopez, <laughs> but I did teach Kurt Ellis. <laughs> so I think that counts for something. I'm pretty confident about that. First of all, um, I'd like to say thanks to the Sting Foundation for this recognition, and I'd like to offer my congratulations to the other inductees. You know, it's an honor for sure to be uh, here with them, 
and be associated with those who have already been inducted. I've been fortunate to be associated with the swing schools for uh, 40 years, and I'd like to make a few comments about the changes that I've seen and experienced during those four decades. So it starts like this. When I came here in 1977, Jimmy Carter was president. Those were the days, right? <laughs> um, Lower Road was a one-lane dirt road, and the commons, where we're now sitting, was in the middle of the corner. Yeah. In 1977, there were no AV classes, uh, no swimming pools, and no computers. And no one had heard of a Liberty, or a Harvest, or a Pleasant Ridge. And in 1977, Jack Crabtree was a relatively new teacher and coach here at Saline. Howard Hintz was winding down his tenure as superintendent. And Paul Thiebaud was trying to keep guys like David Rack in line. <laughs> and a fellow named Glenn Corona was uh, patrolling the hallways of Saline High School. Obviously, much has changed during these past 40 years. Saline has grown from a mostly rural agricultural community to a much more suburban community with our own box stores and even a movie theater now. And likewise, the school district has changed also. It's moved from a quiet rural district where Tractor Day once rivaled homecoming, and it's moved to a, a mega district with high-powered academics and high-powered extracurriculars. During the past 40 years, it's been my distinct pleasure to see and live through those many changes. It's been rewarding to see the district grow and evolve into the most, one of the most highly regarded school systems in the state of Michigan. When I first set foot in the old high school in the fall of 1977, I was proud to be here. And I feel that same pride now some 40 years later. You know, as the years have gone by, it's always been amusing to see just where your former students end up and what kind of accomplishments, accomplishments they might have. In my case, I happen to have taught some of the leaders of our present school system. Yep, it's um, this way, it's somewhat alarming to realize that your boss is the same kid that sat in the back of your freshman English class. That would be Scott Brady. I would also include in that group people like Bert Ellis and David Rapp. So maybe they didn't know the difference between an adjective and an adverb. I'm sure they didn't. And maybe they didn't know the difference between a comma and a coma. But somehow, uh, they, they survived, and in fact, they thrive, and they are now leading our district in the future. Um, one other thing, I'd like to recognize some people who are with me here tonight. They represent, to me, uh, those people who helped me get through the 40 years here at Saline. First, I'd like to recognize Tom and Kathy McAuliffe. I taught and coached two of their daughters, and the McAuliffe's represent, to me, the hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of parents whose children I worked with over the years. The support and friendship that came from parents like the McCall's made this job, made this life, a worthwhile and fulfilling endeavor. Also with me tonight, right over here, are Allie Fox and her sister, Carrie Craig. It was my pleasure to teach and coach both Allie and Carrie, and they represent to me the many, many students I worked with here at Saline. They also represent the work ethic, the drive to succeed, and the character that I cherished in my students and athletes. Traits like these made going to work each day something really you wanted to do rather than something you had to do. And whether it was on, in the classroom or on the cross country course, I always felt lucky to spend time with the young people I taught and coached. And there also is family. Who speaks tonight? My wife Mary, many of you know, who's the best Spanish teacher Selene ever had. <laughs> she wrote that part. <laughs> and also, one of my sisters, Stephanie, is here, and her husband Carmine. And here in spirit are my three kids. Um, they have different reasons for not being around. Travis is in Portland, Oregon. He's taking care of our latest grandchild, who was born three, three weeks ago yesterday. And my other son, Ryan, many of you know, lives in Prague in the Czech Republic. Kind of a long uh, transport for him to be here. And our daughter, Megan, has, I think, the, the best reason for not being here. She's about nine and a half months pregnant right now. <laughs> and is waiting to give birth uh, any day, any, any minute, really. So if you see Mary quickly leave here, you'll know why. <laughs> Anyone who's in education knows a couple things. One, it's a lot of work. And number two, 
there's often not a lot of recognition, unless where family comes in. They pick you up when you're down, they celebrate your successes, and they will hope to calm you down when you're ready to perhaps do great bodily harm to two or three kids in front of your classes. <laughs> Parents, students, family, these are the bedrock of education. So, to wrap this up, from day one here at Saline, I felt, felt lucky to be here. Lucky to be in a community, in a school where education mattered, where teachers and coaches were valued, and where expectations were always high. And when I really think about it, which I try to now, and it comes down to this, it's real simple as five words. I loved what I did. How can, that's, you just love it. You're lucky your vocation is your passion. Your passion is your vocation. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for the sign. Thank you, Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, let's please give these eight outstanding individuals. As you may have noticed when you came in this evening, plaques honoring our Hall of Fame inductees are permanently displayed in the hallway just outside the LNA Ewing Performing Arts Center. The Alumni Committee is absolutely thrilled with this fourth class of Hall of Famers, and we look forward to accepting nominations for the 2018 Hall of Fame, typically right after the first of the year. So um, we get the school year started, we throw the thing right at the beginning, and then we, we take a little bit of a break here. Uh, but we look forward to adding to this outstanding group of 29 individuals that are already enshrined in our Hall of Fame. In a little departure from what we've done in the past, we've figured out some things that we can do a little bit better with this. We'd like to ask our Hall of Fame members to please go down to the Hall of Fame right now so we can take a couple pictures. Usually we, uh, we dismiss and everybody gets caught up talking. So if we could have our Hall of Fame members just head right down right now, uh, right down the Hall of Train. We'll go down there with you. We'll take some pictures. We'll, we'll get everybody else down there too, don't worry. But uh, we get them down there first, it will expedite things a little bit for everybody. <coughs> and as they make their way down there, I would absolutely like to thank you for your time tonight. I'm sure you're as excited about this group as we are. Uh, it's just an absolutely wonderful way for us to recognize these folks. As you exit, and you're welcome to go down and take pictures with them. We would ask there are some um, receptacles there. If you could please turn in your lanyards and your ID badges on your way out, that would be very much appreciated. Um, but on behalf of the Foundation for Sceneria Schools, I'd like to congratulate the newly enshrined Hall of Fame members and thank you for your attendance tonight.